Okay, so welcome to the sixth live stream of how to start a podcast. So as you might know already, I'm sure you know by now, we've been starting a podcast at Easy Companies called the Nine to Survive podcast. So we're just going to go through and document the journey that we've been through. Now, this podcast only went live two weeks ago. So the scope of this, um, this talk will be purely focused around really the technicalities and anything you need to kind of launch the podcast. Um, and then we want to, maybe at the end, we'll go over like what our growth plan is to get the podcast off the ground and the challenges that we face in terms of growing that. Um, so I'm joined by Mason, who is our content producer. Uh, maybe just introduce yourself a little bit about what you're doing here. Hi, so I am the content producer at Easy Companies and I'm pretty much working a lot all, all the time behind the scenes. Um, yeah, set between setting up cameras and helping, you know, editing stuff, just helping bring all the content together so that we can upload it and share it with everyone. Yeah, so Ma Mason's basically been working behind the scenes on, on all of the podcasts that we do and any of the technicalities and the videos and, and cutting them up and editing them. Um, so brings a good expertise in terms of the technical components of producing the podcast. Now, we have a pretty high production value in the podcast that we do at Easy Companies. So um, we are also filming the podcast. Um, and we've got a bit of noise in the background. We're just doing this in a hotel lobby. Um, so excuse the noise. Um, yeah, so we, we basically, we have a high production value in that we're doing videos at the same time. So we've got lights set up. We've got cameras set up. Um, we use pretty high quality mics. But one of the things I really want to start off by saying is if you're launching a podcast, you can probably agree with this, you don't have to go crazy at the start. 100%. Like, um, yeah. you know, one of our team members, Lisa, launched her own podcast um, just off the bat of just talking into, a, you know, an, uh, <laughs> an iPhone mic and putting it up on Apple. So it's quite simple to do that. Um, so when we talk about what we're doing, just remember like, you know, in terms of starting a podcast, the main thing is just getting it out there and the content is king. Um, yeah, so is there anything you want to add to that? You know, yeah, there are definitely, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get to it a bit after. Um, that we'll, yeah, you can really get a podcast started with anything. You yeah. Same thing with an iPhone, you can make a video out of that. You have, you know, a phone and an audio recorder right in your pocket yeah. all the time, so... Yeah, and I think I think the thing is when we when we start off things like doing video recording or podcast, we over engineer um, the technicalities. And what we forget is that content is king. Um, so really, what it's going to come down to is, you know, what content are you putting into the podcast? Because that's what people are listening to. If there's a siren going off in the background, or for instance, people moving tables, um, it's still about the content, and that's what's going to keep people engaged. Um, so that's something really important. Um, so you can literally just, if you have an iPhone or a mic, you can talk into that. Um, now, in terms of getting the podcast distributed, um, you record it on your phone and there's an app out there called Anchor. Um, that's Anchor, like on the boat. And you can basically just, you know, that's what we've done. We've essentially just put, um, you know, the direct recording of our podcast, we put that up. And the beauty of Anchor is that they distribute it out to all the platforms. So you don't even need to work with Apple. Like we haven't done anything with Apple or Spotify. Um, and they'll just distribute it for you. So, and they, they have an app on the iPhone, right? We haven't used that. But if you literally press record, much like voice memos, mm -hmm. you could record a podcast and have it live, like within, what, an hour, probably? Yeah, yeah. it's around that. Um, so that's, that's the, you know, regardless of the tech, that's the distribution. Yeah. And I think that's important to, you know, remember that like it's not that you're going to have to go out to all these platforms and set up any accounts. There's there's tools out there that are free um, that can do all this for you. Um, so I think the other thing to think about if you're looking to launch a podcast, because they're, they're, you know, to give you context of why we launched it, um, we see a trend at um, Easy Companies that it looks like people are moving away from absorbing content on Instagram. And this isn't yet this is where the trend's going it's starting to move away from things like instagram youtube and move into people just wanting to kind of listen to a podcast while they're commuting that's that's what i've noticed at least all the research we've done you know gary vaynerchuk's out there saying that like he's he strongly believes that 
podcasts are going to be the next the next thing well yeah i think as well it's just super easy it, the tech's always there it's just super easy to get something out there yeah. so and and that's it, it but it's also i think it comes down to attention like it's insane how all like when you're talking about platforms like instagram it's like you can literally it's hard to captivate someone for more than a minute mm. but then people are listening to an entire 40 minute podcast and you've got you basically own the show then um, you think of how hard it is to get a minute of attention on Instagram, which you're literally only just a swipe away. But mm-hmm. on a podcast, you're much more inspirational as a brand, as it be a personal brand or business brand. Yeah. There's much more opportunity to get that out there, right? Well, as well on Instagram, it's so easy to just swipe and go. Yeah. You know, you've lo- if you don't have something great on Instagram within 60 seconds, you've lost the audience. Yeah. It's too easy to get out of, whereas a podcast is... You know, you can kind of take your time, but it's also good to have the captivating content from the whole way through. Yeah, mm-hmm. I completely agree. And that, and and I think if you if you're looking to start a podcast to make a revenue stream, I'd strongly advise that against that because it's going to take you at least a year to get the podcast off the ground and be successful. Unless you fluke it and the content is incredible and it just takes off. I would not look at the podcast as a potential revenue stream directly, like in terms of using sponsorship or anything Mm -hmm. like that. Um, I think it's going to be very hard to monetize something like that. And it's only the bigger podcasting tools, uh, apps, um, sorry, podcast providers out there that are doing that at the moment. Um, it's, It's really about something that you're passionate about in terms of sharing content. And, you know, that can, there's really two types of podcasts from what I've seen. There's, ones where it's just maybe you as the host sharing your journey um, and documenting your journey and then the second type is that more interview style right Mm. so you're getting guests on um, and the good thing there is that you can host the show you can host the party if you want to call it it also means that every like with our nine to survive podcast every episode can be completely different yeah as well everyone just brings a whole new flavor to the table so it's really cool yeah and i think the good the good thing I just want to iterate on that is yeah like in terms of hosting the party you have the capacity to bring a guest on the show that then they can send that podcast once they're live out to their audience and you're also getting really good content there and you'd be surprised how many people say yes to coming on podcasts Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) like when we launched we're like how are we ever going to get a guest on the podcast and we just went out there and literally just you know Put, a, put emails out there to all the different startup founders and stuff like that mm. and we got an immediate response we're booked on the podcast we're, we're doing one every week we're booked up until November now um, so you think we're in you know just moving into August we've got two three months of guests every week there's 12, 12 more guests um, and we're now looking into the future to see where else we can go um, in terms of getting them on so we've been working on that for five weeks now yeah, what would you say the major well. learnings are from your end well, the major learnings are, I think, is what you touched on before, which is if you're doing a podcast, you have to be passionate about what you're going to talk about. Otherwise, you're going to lose interest and then your guests are going to kind of lose interest as what, and then the audience is already gone by that point. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The other learnings is it's going to be tough at the beginning to get into a set rhythm, but once you get that rhythm, then it's about working on perfecting it. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to be ready that, you know, your first few episodes are going to come across... Um, potentially a bit unpracticed and you know it's going to be rough but we're seeking progress over perfection here right it's not you're not going to have a potentially it's not going to come off like a super awesome podcast at the start and everything's amazing and the engagement's there but it's the practice and repetition that's going to get you there yeah yeah and that also applies for the editing of the podcast definitely the first I mean you might even have yeah. to be able to look through our podcast the first few episodes are a bit edgier but you build up into you know yeah the ideal product at the end of the day and yeah i think that's the thing and it's it's um we're not we're not going for the perfection um i just had some other questions that we submitted here so i'll just pull those up um do you want to just jump into anything cause we did discuss the tech before in terms of keeping it low key mm. is there anything else you think we should add around the tech that you know worked for you Look, I think as uh, if you're looking for a solution, there are a number of forums and you know YouTube channels that will help you make the best decision as to what you need. But it's 
as nice as it is to go and buy the most expensive gear, I'm always a fan of just going and buying the things and getting things that you need, not the top, you know, yeah. not, not necessarily the best. It's always about building up and it's yeah. kind of the same principle throughout, I guess, podcasting yeah. in terms of buying, editing, and the content itself is just build up yeah. to something. If, if you want to build above the... Um the iPhone mic or anything like that or you know it, maybe don't use the AirPods or anything like that because they're going to pick up a lot of background noise I think it's the Audio Technica mic um, we'll post that in the comments later on um, I think it's about $100 or something it's a USB mic and you can plug that into the computer mm -hmm. it's going to take a lot of the background noise out and in terms of editing if you really want to put the effort in you can do it otherwise just send it live like get it up there you can also um, get one of these guys that we're yeah, actually we're using, using today. A, this is a like a, a Rode Smart Lav. Yeah. I think they're about 70 bucks. Yeah. And mm. that just plugs into the headphone port of your computer. So pretty low tech. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the key because, I mean, we've we've kind of committed long term to the podcast at Easy Companies. Um, so, I, you know, we put a lot of money into getting it done right. But I can definitely see the path. And we've got Lisa here um, who's you know put her own podcast out there and if you go and you know if you were to go and look at it you wouldn't really know the difference um apart from a few car noises in the background but we have that stuff too when we record on very high high end equipment yeah. so um there's definitely a quick way to getting started now the other probably key point is around expectations if you're building the podcast and you expect that when it goes live you're going to wake up the next day and there's going to be 500 listeners I think you've got to get realistic there. Um, it's a long road to get recognized. And the hard part about podcasts, if you're sitting, like it's hard to get featured. It's hard to get people to find you. Um, you've got to think off the podcast app because to get featured on Apple or Spotify, incredibly challenging. It's like you've got to bring the audience to the podcast app to listen to your podcast. Um, yeah, no, I think as well as don't, or oh, well, a tip that I'd like to give from a personal experience is don't ever let the results mm. or no one listening or no one, you know, if you don't get on that new and noteworthy page, don't let that stop you from producing another episode and keep releasing on a weekly schedule because, I mean, that's what's going to kill the podcast is if you stop. Yeah. Stop doing it. Yeah, I think to, not to bring up Gary Vaynerchuk all the time, but, you know, <laughs> did, did inspire him to build a podcast and he always says like, if you were to do one thing for a year, like if you, even if it's one podcast a week for a year, zero results, see what happens in a year, you'll be surprised. It's the commitment and determination to it. And that's, that's about passion. Like if you actually enjoy, like what we do here with these live streams, we're just getting them out there and putting the content out. The results aren't major. We're not having thousands of listeners, but we enjoy making them, right? And that's the key. If you're not enjoying it, it's probably not right or the content's not aligned. Um, and if you commit to that and you just do it for a year, you'll be surprised where the results will get you. Um, we haven't seen it yet because we're still working on it, but we can see the growth already. Um, we do do advertising in the background um, for the podcast, which can help, but I still think it's about just getting noticed, like recording and get on other people's podcasts eventually as well as a, as a host. And then you can mention you know, the podcast that you've been working on at the same time. Yeah, and paid advertising isn't the only way. I mean, if you, like, yeah, get friends and family around it, we have a great team at Easy Companies that got around the podcast, even from, you know, when we were shooting the first episode all the way to the date we yeah. sent it live. If you can get as many people around it as possible and use your whole network, that's really going to, I think, boost yeah. everything you do. I think it's leveraging all the networks and you know the guests themselves will push it out to their audience and that really helps but it's also just, yeah it really is determination i think that's the key um and just having captivating content at the end of the day so run it by family and friends see what they think of the podcast and get any feedback you need um, i'll just check if we've got any questions submitted um we'll just jump in Okay, um, there's no questions, but we do have our um, content marketer, our Lisa Tran, who's who did set up a podcast as well. So she's going to jump in and give a few um, quick tips of her end. So just grab the mic there. 
Hey guys, thanks for inviting me on the live stream. So as Alex mentioned, I started my own podcast at the beginning of the year and it was very, very amateur. I literally just started recording on my iPhone. Um, it doesn't sound like I recorded it on like a really professional mic, but it, from my feedback that I've been getting, it sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think Alex is right with what he says. Just get it out there and um, obviously talk about something you're passionate about. Don't talk about something that you don't know a lot about because it will like people will feel that when it comes when they listen to it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is also um, don't worry what everyone else thinks. I think a lot a big challenge of, for me was because um, on my podcast I actually share a lot of personal experiences um, for the intention of helping others Um, and every single time I released a podcast episode I would worry about what people think and the thing is it doesn't really matter what other people think it's it's your podcast and you should feel comfortable sharing what you want to share Um, and everyone's going to take it um, very subjectively anyway Um, but yeah it's all about what was it like recording your first podcast and putting it out there (laughs) um it was really nerve-wracking because the first one was quite uh, personal. Um, but once I put it out there, um, I literally just edited it, I put it out there, didn't even think about it. And then suddenly I got a lot of messages coming through from my friends and even um, followers saying they really appreciated that I was vulnerable and that I shared my story because um, a lot of people resonated with it. Yeah. And um, then I kept doing it. Um, and every single time I would release an episode, I would have the same fear, like, oh, what are people yeah. going to think of me? And I would get a lot of positive feedback. Um, it's not so far. I'm pretty open to it, but I haven't gotten any negative feedback yet. But yeah. I'm very open to constructive criticism when it comes to um, the podcast. I think that's the key. Yeah, it's um, you've, if you're putting yourself out there, you've got to be ready for the critics. But I, we haven't seen it so far. Um, and I think, I think the key is just start. I think it's just you know get something recorded, but. It, it's interesting because if you've got people out there who are running businesses at the moment it's like where am I going to find like what should I talk about on my podcast and it could literally just be documenting your journey as you go along building a business like it doesn't seem like much at the moment because like who's who's going to care about me starting my business at such a you know I'm just getting things off the ground right you look back in a year and now you have an entire podcast documenting the journey um, of getting it off the ground you know if you weren't going to interview guests for instance um, that would be incredible to be able to just go back and look at someone's entire journey and even for yourself. So I think there's many different ways that you can find the content to get out there. Um, but watch this space in terms of podcasts. I think you're going to see in the next five years, it's going to be the new trend. So if you haven't jumped on it, definitely think about jumping on it already. And yeah, good luck. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Do you want to just say? Thanks, Lisa. So I think that ends the stream. So if there's any other questions that come up um, after the stream, just leave them in the Facebook. We will definitely get around to answering them. If you have any topics that you want us to discuss, um, just pop them in below. So thanks for joining. Make sure you subscribe and go check out our podcast now. So it's the Nine to Survive podcast. That's the number nine to survive. Um, And go have a listen and you can see how we produced it. If you want to see behind the scenes, Um, follow us on Instagram and check out the YouTube channel Easy Companies because that has the video feed the video podcast so thanks for joining and we'll leave you there